Imagine a jet slicing across the sky at over Mach 2, faster than a rifle bullet, invisible to radar, and suddenly releasing a hypersonic missile that slams into a target hundreds of kilometers away. The warhead, weighing several hundred kilograms, detonates with a shockwave strong enough to level bunkers and shatter hardened air defenses. The pilot never even comes within reach of enemy fighters or missiles. Today, we are going to explore the world's most dangerous and fastest sixth-generation fighter programs ever created. These aircraft are designed to exceed Mach 4, while carrying hypersonic missiles and controlling entire swarms of AI drones. They are not science fiction anymore. They are blueprints for the wars of tomorrow. The United States Air Force's Next Generation Air Dominance Program, often labeled around the prototype F-47, is the most ambitious fighter development effort in history. Boeing secured the prime contract in March 2025, marking the start of full engineering and manufacturing development. While the exact cost per aircraft is classified, budget allocations give strong hints. The program already consumes tens of billions, and analysts project a flyaway cost of at least $300 to $400 million per aircraft once production matures. The Air Force, however, rarely frames NGAD as just a jet. It is a family system that centers on a manned stealth aircraft supported by a fleet of at least 1,000 collaborative combat aircraft. These CCAs are smaller drones designed to perform dangerous roles electronic jamming, missile delivery, reconnaissance, and decoy operations. The design choice is deliberate. A stealth aircraft alone, no matter how advanced, is still limited in magazine depth and survivability. With CCAs, the F-47 becomes a command node, projecting power far beyond what its physical size could ever allow. Technically, the F-47 will feature adaptive cycle propulsion, a leap from traditional turbofans. Developed under the Adaptive Engine Transition Program, these engines can shift between high thrust and high efficiency modes mid-flight. That means a combat radius exceeding 1,000 nautical miles, a necessity in the Pacific where distances between bases stretch beyond the reach of fifth-generation fighters. Expected maximum speeds climb past Mach 2, with supercruise performance at lower supersonic ranges. The internal weapons bays are rumored to be significantly larger than those of the F-22 or F-35 allowing the carriage of long-range air-to-air missiles and future hypersonic weapons. The airframe design appears to emphasize tailless or diamond-like platforms to reduce radar returns across multiple bands. The U.S. Navy's answer is the FAXX, a carrier-based sixth-generation fighter intended to replace FA-18EF Super Hornets in the 2030s. Its mission set differs. The Navy requires long endurance and the ability to operate from limited deck space. This drives compromises in wing design and structural reinforcement for catapult launches and arrested recoveries. Early design concepts show broad wings for extended loiter time, large internal bays for long-range strike weapons, and compatibility with the MQ-25 Stingray tanker drone. Cost projections remain fluid but the Navy has already placed over $1 billion in unfunded priority requests just to sustain momentum. Strategic documents emphasize the FAXX's role in integrating with carrier-launched drone wingmen, expanding the striking range of the carrier air wing to more than 1,000 kilometers. The design challenge here is balancing stealth with folding wing mechanisms, maintaining radar cross-section reductions while preserving carrier storage efficiency. Across the Atlantic and Pacific simultaneously, the Global Combat Air Program unites the United Kingdom, Japan, and Italy. The GSAP fighter is projected to enter service by 2035. Its unique development method is digital from the ground up. Engineers rely heavily on digital twins and rapid simulation cycles. This allows design iterations in virtual environments before committing to physical builds. The partnership splits responsibilities. BAE Systems and Leonardo UK lead airframe design. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries oversees major structural development in Japan, while Avio Aero and Rolls-Royce partner with IHI on propulsion. The engine is expected to be adaptive, delivering both range and thrust improvements. GCAP will likely feature an open systems architecture, ensuring rapid upgrades to avionics and mission software. Funding is evenly shared across the three nations, each leveraging domestic industry to preserve sovereignty. Specifics on performance remain undisclosed, 
but insiders suggest a top speed around Mach 2, a combat radius above 1,000 kilometers, and heavy reliance on AI co-pilots for sensor fusion and predictive maintenance. Europe's other path, the Future Combat Air System, is a partnership between France, Germany, and Spain. Its centerpiece is the new generation fighter, backed by a combat cloud and remote carriers. Unlike GCAP's sprint schedule, FKS targets entry into service around 2040, reflecting both technological ambition and political complexity. Dassault Aviation leads on the fighter, Airbus on systems integration, and Indra on Spanish contributions. Engine development falls to a Safran MTU ITP consortium. The fighter itself is expected to have very low observability across radar, infrared, and even electronic emission signatures, with large bays for long-range missiles. Remote carriers will act as loyal wingmen, but also as miniature jamming or strike assets launched from the fighter. The combat cloud is designed to integrate aircraft, satellites, and ground nodes into a unified, fused battle space picture. Program costs already climb into the tens of billions, and disputes between Dassault and Airbus over work share have caused delays. Still, the vision is bold, a sovereign European ecosystem of fighters and drones immune to outside export restrictions. China's contribution to the sixth-generation race surfaced in 2025, when high-resolution images of a tailless stealth prototype appeared at Chengdu. The design resembles a broad delta, with no vertical stabilizers, optimized for radar cross-section reduction from all aspects. Analysts believe it is a testbed for China's next-generation heavy fighter, with space for long-range missiles in expansive internal bays. The engine type is uncertain, though speculation points to a derivative of the WS-19 or a new adaptive design under development. What makes China's approach different is speed of iteration. The country rapidly prototypes, tests, and publicly displays models to signal progress. AI integration is a given, with control systems for drone swarms expected to be embedded from the outset. Costs are not published, but state-level funding ensures steady cash flow. The strategic logic is clear – match or exceed American range and payload in the Pacific, while producing in numbers large enough to overwhelm. Russia's MiG-41, officially known as PAKDP, illustrates the most speculative vision. Advertised as an interceptor capable of Mach 4 speeds and altitudes approaching 30 kilometers, it is less about stealth multi-role dominance and more about defending Russian airspace against hypersonic or satellite threats. Reports claim exotic features like laser weapons for missile defense and even the capability to operate in near space. Yet materials, science, and budget constraints make these claims suspect. To achieve sustained Mach 4 flight, the airframe would require advanced composites and cooling systems that Russia has struggled to field. Costs, if the aircraft even progresses beyond concept, would be prohibitive. Analysts expect, at best, a niche high-altitude interceptor, not a broad sixth-generation multi-role competitor. When comparing these designs, certain truths emerge. The United States prioritizes range and swarm control through CCAs. The Navy prioritizes endurance for carriers. GCAP emphasizes speed of digital development and shared sovereignty. FKS focuses on independence and long-term integration. China aims for rapid prototyping and large-scale deployment. Russia aims for raw speed and altitude, albeit with questionable feasibility. All pursue adaptive engines to some degree. All integrate AI for both combat and logistics. Lasers, however, remain out of reach for fighters, with directed energy more viable on ships or ground vehicles. If sixth-generation jets are the knights of the battlefield, then their swords are the hypersonic missiles. The United States is betting heavily on the Hypersonic Attack Cruise Missile, or HACM, built by Raytheon and Northrop. It uses a scramjet to fly at speeds above Mach 5 while hugging the atmosphere. That gives it both speed and maneuverability, making interception nearly impossible. The Air Force has already spent more than $2 billion on development, with the original contract worth $985 million. Analysts expect each missile to cost between $15 and $20 million. The warhead is not publicly disclosed, but by comparison with similar systems, it is likely several hundred kilograms of high explosive. At Mach 5, that kinetic impact alone makes it devastating. Alongside HCM, the Army is rolling out the long-range hypersonic weapon, called Dark Eagle, 
and the Navy is adapting it as the conventional prompt strike missile. These use rocket boosters to launch a glide body thousands of kilometers. Zumwalt-class destroyers will carry 12 of them, each able to strike deep inland with warheads weighing hundreds of kilograms. From Guam, Alaska, or a destroyer in the Philippine Sea, these weapons can reach enemy bases in minutes. Russia has already put hypersonics into combat. The KH-47 M2 Kinjal is an air-launched missile with a top speed of Mach 10 and a range of around 480 kilometers. It can carry either a conventional warhead or a nuclear warhead between 5 and 50 kilotons. Each missile costs about $10 million. Russia has used Kinjal in Ukraine with mixed results. The Zircon is another Russian hypersonic system, a scramjet cruise missile tested on ships and submarines. Zircon can fly at Mach 9 for about 1,000 kilometers. Its warhead mass is unclear, but the sheer kinetic energy at that speed could sink a hardened warship. Even more ambitious is the Avangard, a nuclear glide vehicle that rides an intercontinental missile before diving into the atmosphere at over Mach 20. Avangard is strategic rather than tactical, but it demonstrates the scale of Russia's ambitions. Adding to the list is the Oreshnik, a missile Russia claims can fly at Mach 11 while carrying multiple submunitions. Moscow says it can deliver either conventional explosives or nuclear payloads across European distances. Analysts remain skeptical about how many Oreshniks Russia can actually produce. China fields the DF-17, a medium-range ballistic missile with a hypersonic glide vehicle. The DF-17 has a range between 1,800 and 2,500 kilometers and travels between Mach 5 and Mach 10. It has a launch mass of about 15,000 kilograms and can carry either a conventional or nuclear warhead. Chinese media claim it can strike with meter-level precision. The DF-17 is already deployed in brigades, which makes it a real operational threat. India is working with Russia on the BrahMos-2, the successor to the existing BrahMos cruise missile. BrahMos-2 is designed to reach Mach 8 with a range of about 1,500 kilometers. It will carry a conventional warhead weighing several hundred kilograms. The estimated cost is about $12.5 million per missile, giving India a place in the hypersonic race. Then there are lasers, the favorite sci-fi dream. Mounting a high-energy laser on a fighter jet is attractive in theory, but the physics are brutal. To burn through an incoming missile, you need hundreds of kilowatts of power. A ship or ground system can supply that, but a fighter jet cannot. At least not yet. The U.S. paused its SHIELD airborne laser project, but sixth-generation jets are being designed with enough electrical capacity to add lasers later. Until then, electronic warfare and decoys are the real directed energy of the skies. Artificial intelligence, however, is already here. In the U.S., AI will fly the collaborative combat aircraft, autonomous wingmen that scout, jam, or carry missiles. In Europe, GXAP and FCAS rely on AI co-pilots to fuse radar, infrared, and electronic data into one picture. China pushes even further, aiming to control entire swarms of drones from a single command jet. In combat, where seconds matter, an AI that reacts half a second faster than a human could decide the winner. So, the future of air combat isn't just about stealth shaping or thrust, it's about who can launch the fastest missile, who can carry the heaviest warhead, and whose AI reacts the quickest. Hypersonics provide the hammer, AI directs the blow, and lasers wait in the wings. Subscribe now before the algorithm replaces me with a drone voiceover at Mach 5. Because the next war won't just be fought by pilots and planes, it will be decided by code, kilowatts, and kinetic energy. Thanks for watching.